What's up guys? So today in this video, I'm going to be showing you and telling you the three most common mistakes that I see in Airtable. Now these are from me taking a lot of calls, a lot of free calls, which you can get in the description uh, with, with people going through their databases, going through their workflows, and then optimizing those. So these are the three most common mistakes. Now, if you haven't met me before, my name is Ben Green. I'm the owner of Optimize.is. What we do is we help business owners, probably just like you, help you optimize your information systems. So that's some stuff like Airtable for asset management, reporting, or CRM, Asana for project management, as well as Slack for communications. So if you're interested in any services, you can check out the link in the description, request a consultation from me or someone on my team, but without further ado, we'll get right into the video now. In Airtable, I'm gonna use Airtable, just have it up here so that I can show you some of these common mistakes uh, without just explaining them with words. So the first most common mistake is not understanding that Airtable is a relational database. And specifically within that, I want to talk about one-to-many relationships. So one-to-many relationships is what relational databases are made for. These are, in my mind, and most people in like logic for a database to work well, these are the, the best relationships that you can have between tables. So one-to-many relationship is between two tables. And so, or you could think of it like between two types of data. So taking yourself out of this database right here, just looking at it top level, what you have is you have opportunities, interactions, accounts, contacts, tasks, and I'm gonna ignore the rest for now. So for, you wanna just think about the names of those tables. For one opportunity, you might have many interactions many interactions. For one account, you might have many contacts. Uh, but for one contact, they're only linked to one account. For one opportunity, they're linked to one account, but one account can be let linked to many opportunities. So on the inverse of a one-to-many, there is a one-to-one, -one, but uh, one one one-to-one -one relationship there. So really what we want to get into here is the power of the one-to-many relationship. So for example, if you had the, this accounts table and the opportunities, for one account you can have many opportunities, but for one opportunity it's only ever linked to one account. So in here what this allows us to do is you can see there's multiple, sometimes for some of these fields there's multiple opportunities here in this linked record. But if we come to the opportunities table, we can see that there's only ever one account linked in here. So that's that's vitally important, and most a lot of people don't understand that. Now there's three types of relationships, so there's one to one, there's one to many, and then there's many to many. Many to many, you have to split up into two one to many's. A one to one, you can combine that into the same table. But all I wanted to talk about here was that the one-to-many relationship is what you should be trying to create. Um, and like I said, for the other two, you have to do the alternatives. Now, the second thing that most Airtable users don't get is that Airtable is a database. And this relational database, uh, each table should have unique information in each row. And the only row that you need, or the only field that you need that unique information in is this first field over here. So that's the primary field and that's what's called the primary field. It's like uh, if you used access, it'd be like the primary key. And that is very vitally important, especially as you look to implement some automations in your Airtable. So this primary key right here needs to be what's called a unique identifier. And so that's the second mistake is people don't understand what a unique identifier is. A unique identifier needs to be like a really good one is an email. So this would probably be more applicable on the contacts, but an email is a great unique identifier. A lot of the times you'll also see people using concatenate formulas. So a concatenate formula pulls together multiple different fields and to, to make that a true, like really good unique identifier. So these unique identifiers, they're vitally important for getting data in and getting data out of your Airtable database. And that is because like, imagine you're a computer and you want to update a very specific record in your Airtable database. Uh, but first you need to find that record. 
So if I want to update a contact in Airtable, then the most unique thing that usually one person only has one email. So I'm going to search those emails. Now, if two people have the same email, then it's probably just going to give the first record. But if you use like names, for example, two people could easily have the same names. So how are you going to differentiate those if you're a computer? You're probably just going to go with the first one you find. So that's the second biggest mistake in Airtable is not understanding the power of having a unique identifier in here, especially as you start moving towards some automations. That's the first two. So the first one was the one to many relationships. The second mis biggest mistake is not understanding what a unique identifier is. Now the third biggest mistake is mistaking Airtable views for Airtable tables. So a lot of times what I'll see is, and th this is very common for people coming from spreadsheets to a database like Airtable. And what you'll find is like, you might have multiple tables of contacts up here, or you might have like multiple, basically uh, it doesn't matter which example I give, but it's different versions of the same data set located in multiple tables. So for example, maybe you have one table with the contact information of people from one company. Uh, and then you, the mistake would be creating another table with the contact information of people from a different company. So while that might make sense in something like uh, Google Sheets or Excel, it doesn't make logical sense for the database. So the database, you want to be structuring it in a way where each field in the table can house like a, a type of information. So it's not like this table is containing contact information for one specific company. It's just containing contact information about a contact. So that's the third biggest mistake right there is using tables as views. Now the solution to that, so if you had a, if you had a table up here and we, we can go ahead and duplicate this. Um, I'm not going to, but like you would have two tables with, with contact information. You want to bring those together and just put them all in one table. I see this a lot of time for like, if you're a products business, if your business has a lot of products that people can buy, having like different types of products and different tables. While that might make sense in a different place for Airtable as a database, all of those are products. So they should be in the same table. So another example here would be if you di had different like types of accounts that you had in different tables, maybe like based on size or based on industry, then you want to again, take all of those accounts and get all of that information in one table. Now you can a lot of times run into issues with uh, having different fields for different accounts. And that's where you really need to work on your field management. Uh, that That's really when you get into like, uh, combining your data sets and uh, it's called data migration, getting, getting, moving the data to where, where it needs to go. So those are the three top Airtable mistakes that I see. Uh, it could be anywhere from a beginner to a intermediate user to someone who sees themselves as an expert. These are really common, uh, just people, you, you need the fundamentals of an Airtable database to build one successfully to use it very well in your business uh, as Airtable is meant to be used. Sure, you can make some of these mistakes and uh, still have a really good Airtable database that you use a lot, but to get the power out of Airtable, uh, especially with automations, that's really where you need to identify your one-to-many relationships. You need to identify your, your unique identifier as well as identify where you're creating tables instead of creating views. So there's very specific uh, language around creating different tables. And I like to think of those as entities. So if we made a base schema, that would be very similar to a entity relationship diagram. And so you could think of each of these up here as an entity. So those are the three mistakes. I would love to hear any more mistakes that you know of uh, that are common with Airtable users in the comments. But if you are curious on my process for designing a database from scratch, from nothing in the database, uh, you can click this link in the end screen up here and it will, I will go through, we will go through together 
the steps for building out a database. Uh, it's, it can be a very useful video if you take it and figure out where you can use that in the other databases that you're creating or redoing some of your current databases. So I encourage you to go click that and it'll be a lot of useful information for database development for yourself, for you, for you and your business. Uh, it's very similar to the services that I offer in the link in the description. So without further ado, I hope you have a great day and I'll see you in the next one. Go click that video in the end.